everyone and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We're excited to be here tonight as always every Tuesday night um, we have this broadcast and um, we focus on a different topic related to homeschooling and unique learners and um, so, so welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. If you're joining us live, if you're joining us recorded that's exciting too but we are broadcasting live right now on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope and um, we're wrapping up our theme this month on autism, um, autism homeschooling. And um, my special guest tonight is um, Dr. Nicole Caldwell. And <laughs> welcome, we're so glad to have you with us. Um, and we're gonna talk about teaching STEM skills to kids with ASD, autism spectrum disorder. And um, so Nicole, I am just glad that you are here, glad that we have an expert in special education and, um, and that you understand the homeschooling realm as well. Um, that's exciting. And um, so we, um, we're just excited to, to hear what you have to say. I, I've already looked through Nicole's slides and I just wanted to let you know that this is gonna be a really fun hour in talking about all of these these different things. And so um, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay tuned and definitely wanna share this, this broadcast um, with others that um, may be struggling with their student on the spectrum because um, she brings a lot, of, a, a lot of really good points into this. And I also wanna thank um, before we get started, I want to thank Unlock Math for sponsoring this episode, and um, if you, we're gonna hear more about them about halfway through the program. But um, thank you, Unlock Math, for um, for sponsoring this, and um, yeah, that's exciting because they're of course a math curriculum, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about um, those types of um, activities with kids. So um, Nicole, as we're getting started, I would just love for our audience to get to, to know you and um, just why you're passionate about autism and um, you know why you pursued your your education and um, and anything else you want to share, I guess. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I'm going to cough right when we start, of course. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is a topic uh, that I really love discussing. Mm. Um, so it's something I have a lot of fun teaching. So I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'll give you a little bit about my background. I have been teaching since about, gosh, it seems like so long ago, um, <laughs> since about 2006. Um, so however long that's been, we stopped counting right. when, you know, when yeah, we get exactly. past a certain age. <laughs> so we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Um, but so it's been a while, but I have mostly um, worked with students with autism in my teaching career. Mm. Um, I uh, knew right away when I was taking my first special education course, when I was getting my teaching certification, I just fell in love with the whole concept of special education because it's so mm. hands-on and so individualized and you can really yeah. meet kids where they are and give them what mm. they need. Um, and autism was a particular interest mm. of mine since I recognized a lot of the sensor, sen excuse me, sensory issues and things like that from uh, my own childhood. Um, I hadn't made the connection mm -hmm. then, but I realized mm -hmm. that I was a really sen sensory sensitive kiddo myself. And so um, that's what kind of led me to the field. Um, so I, um, after I got my teaching awesome. certification, thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's the best. I, the kids are amazing. <laughs> um, and so after I got my teaching certification, then I went on and pursued additional masters and PhD degrees with a specific focus in autism, since I knew that's kind of where I wanted to, to focus on and kind of okay. the rest mm -hmm. is history. I have, um, mostly been working with kids in their homes. So I work with a lot of homeschool families, um, just doing some tutoring or learning support mm -hmm. um, or, um, you know, helping with choosing curriculum or designing curriculum, creating activities um, for um, students awesome. that are, are homeschooled or, um, or do after school mm -hmm. tutoring stuff as well. Um, so I work with mostly homeschool families, at least up until um, the pandemic, then we've kind of switched up a little bit and I work with kids a lot online now. So we're just mm, kind of, mm -hmm. just kind of branching out to new things as we've all had to do over I the think, past yes, year. Yes, exactly. So. We all have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Most awesome. Definitely. Um, yeah. 
So I also have, I'm also a mom. I have a 13 year old kiddo. That's my favorite person. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's kind of me and how I got started and a little bit about what I do. Yeah. Well, that, that's great that, you know, that empathy that you develop personally when you've struggled with something and then to be able to pass that on to students, um, they, they get that, they know that they, they can feel that this, this person is different than, than those, um, that, that haven't, um, don't know what it's like to be inside my shoes. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's awesome. Sorry. I, my internet is, is kind of screwy this, but, um, hopefully we, it, it may be this. mine a little bit as well. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. when I work with my, I teach kids on Zoom now, and sometimes I cut out and drop out of the meeting, and, you know, it oh, happens. Yes. So it may be a little Actually, bit of mine as well. I just remembered, I forgot to hook up my hard, my hard connection. So I'm going to do that. But we have a question, and I'm going to throw that up first before we pull up your slides and, sure. and get my connection going. Um, one of our, our YouTube viewers um, says, do you have any tips to teaching advanced math? I'm not good at math at all. Um, so I am actually, um, I'm learning more about that now. I am, um, I'm doing some kind of personal study on um, dyscalculia, which is um, kind of a mathematics learning difference. Um, so I might look up resources regarding that. I, I wouldn't say I have a whole lot of expertise in that area yet. It's an area I'm really interested in learning more about. Um, mm. So there are a lot of books and websites about um, dyscalculia specifically that have a lot of helpful resources. Um, I don't have any in here at the moment. I apologize. I can provide some links and resources later on. Be awesome. Um, so probably um, once I can, you know, rustle up all of my resources, that's something I can post and share. So I can. Um, okay. Absolutely yeah, and do that. That's a great if you, question. If you um, want us to um, reference that post wherever you make that, then I can put that in the YouTube description mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, I can um, send you some links to put in there. We can do that for sure. Okay. So so yeah. So be looking for that in the YouTube description at, in the next week, probably. Um, Maybe this, if this is that enough timeline for you. <laughs> so, um, and then, um, so you can just keep coming back to that, um, that as well. And also just know that um, Nicole's slides that she's gonna be sharing tonight are also in the YouTube description. So if you wanna access those, that you can get those there as well. So um, that should be helpful. I know in teaching advanced math um, with with my kids, it's, it's sit right next to them, but I, I have a degree in physics, so I love math and I love advanced math, but if you don't like math, I really, really encourage you to find someone who does, um, whether it's an online tutor or um, someone in person, because um, oftentimes with kids that struggle and um, need that one-on-one, -on -one, that, that constant back and forth, um, they, they need to skirt around the math in different directions until your student gets it um, because oftentimes maybe teaching it the typical way isn't going to work or the way the textbook explains it in one so i've had to do that with students i've tutored in math so <laughs> yeah breaking it down um, or looking at it in different ways definitely helps mm -hmm. yeah and and you know when when they're not getting it that if you know your student well to get that starry you know glaze over their eyes <laughs> it's like oh yeah this is going in one ear and out the other <laughs> So, um, but yeah, um, thank you, Karasu, um, for, for sharing that question with us. And also, if you're watching live, um, know that you can pop questions, comments into the feed wherever you're watching from, and we would love to incorporate them in our um, conversation as well. And I think my internet's much better now that I've hooked it up to um, a hardwire. But um, so, would you like to get started with your slides? I know you've got a sure. lot of them, so we should probably pop those up. All right. So let's see. Do I need to push something or do you? I apologize. Um, oh, do I, I, do I need to push I, that share button again? Nope. I I have it all ready to go. I okay. just need you to move to your slides and then. Um, all right. I have I, I have it. Now. Perfect. All right. So I cannot see you. All I can see is my slides. So right. I'll look like I'm yes. talking to that, but. Um, so um, I mentioned earlier that I have a kiddo, and this is a picture of, of him right here. 
Um, a so. few years ago, he's thir he's 13 now, but I still think he's that adorable. But I know. Um, <laughs> we always remember our kids at yeah. those ages. <laughs> of course we do, because they never grow up. Right. Um, but um, So I guess I'll go ahead and flip to my next slide. I already told you yeah. a little bit about me. I gave another space mm -hmm. for that. So we'll just look at another cute picture of my child. And then <laughs> that's fun. We'll, uh, we'll, yes, that's my favorite part of the presentation. Um, <laughs> but I guess so I'll start by first um, talking about um, why can't why should we focus on you know science and stem skills um, I think unfortunately this area is often overlooked at least in schools a lot of the time um, mm. for students who are on the spectrum not always um, but sometimes um, it gets you know kind of pushed to the back burner in favor of other things that we might view as more pressing um, right uh-huh mm -hmm. So, but there are a lot of really good reasons that we, you know, can work on those skills. And these are just a few from um, some research studies I was uh, reading in preparation for this. Um, so what we can look at is um, the idea of science concepts versus science practices. And this isn't necessarily mm. to put them versus each other, um, but we can think about those in two different ways. Um, so science practices or processes, you know, may include things like asking questions, you know, analyzing data or things in your environment and communicating information. So when we right. kind of broaden our view of STEM a little bit, um, you know, mm -hmm. we can see, oh, yeah, there's some things here that can, you know, help kids, you know, with a broad array of skills. Exactly. Um, hmm. um, so Go ahead, and if you're going to talk to me and I can't see you, I apologize if oh, I no. seem awkward right no, now. But... You, no, uh -uh. It, it, it makes so much sense because, you know, a lot of times our kids on the spectrum are drawn to these science things, and we can build those communication skills and um, those deeper thinking um, things in if we do it properly, and I, I know you're going to focus on that, so, so that's awesome. Thanks, yeah. So I think, yeah, and so you bring up some really good points, like on that second uh, that second item there, we kind of discussed a lot of that, you know, it can build in those skills, you know, and help them, you know, ask those questions and look at mm -hmm. real, real problems or real situations they might be facing and learn some strategies for, you know, addressing those things and dealing yeah. with those things. Um, and then we can, you know, um, science instruction with more than of the concepts, you know, we can think of it, it can really relate to life skills as well, you know, learning about, yeah. you know, their bodies and how to be healthy, you know, things mm. like weather. Mm -hmm. And so we can, you know, teach concepts that are, you know, both science, but then they have a really practical application as well. So we can kind of bridge both things yeah. with that. Um, and then if a student, like you mentioned, a lot of students really, really enjoy this. Um, so we can look at it maybe as a vocational skill um, mm -hmm. for some students if they decide they want to pursue, you know, um, any kind of field or even things like, you know, graphics design or coding. When we, you know, broaden our view of STEM, we can see that it includes, you know, a lot of things that might be um, something that our students could do vocationally when they, if they yeah. ever grow up, but if they, <laughs> if we ever them allow them to grow up. <laughs> I, know, I know, that's what I, that's what I mean now. I want my little guy to be little forever, but uh, that's not how it works. So, yes. <laughs> but, so we have to think about those things as well. Exactly. And the sooner you start that and letting go of that, that that's good. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that, yes. That is something I am currently working on. But yeah, so that's a really good point, though. Mm -hmm. I would totally agree. So um, I'm going to just kind of share a few little tips and then a few little um, online resources that you can use to um, find out more about any of this stuff that um, you think might really apply to your child. Um, Great. So I'll kind of start with um, idea number one, which we already touched on a little bit, um, which was to branch out into different, you know, STEM topics. Um, a lot of times I think, um, you know, we think of just the science and, you know, um, technology, math stuff that we learned um, in our own schools. Um, and that's, you know, awesome stuff to teach and important stuff. But there are other, you know, areas too that we might want to consider for um, for our kids if they have an interest in it. Um, so many mm. of the students I've worked with, you know, have really good, um, you know, visual spatial skills or art skills yes. or um, mm -hmm. things like, like coding. Um, kids on the spectrum are often really good at things like that. Um, or if they have a, you know, a really strong interest in a certain type of animal or a certain, you know, um, any type of science, we can, you know, as homeschoolers, you know, we can really 
um, jump into that and let them explore that interest, um, you know, as its own kind of class or as its own, you know, extracurricular thing that we're doing. So um, go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just you faded out for a second. So okay. I was trying to listen. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Um, so I'll just kind of, um, if you can, the pictures may be kind of small, but if you get the download of the slides, you will be able to see a little better. These are all um, different right. 3D modeling designs that um, kids and teens that I've worked with over the past few years have have made. So of, of various oh, cool. ages, ages seven through about high school, seven years old through about high school age, um, we're doing different things with, um, this is a 3D modeling program that you'll see linked. Yeah, you should be shared end. as a resource so, at the end, um, okay. Was something they'd all never tried before. Yeah, there's a link to it mm. there. So um, 3D modeling is a really cool thing to try. And the program that I'm linking to is free. So it's a fun thing to try out oh, cool. um, and see if your child maybe has an interest in it or if they think it's fun. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really cool thing to try out. Very neat. Um, so let's see. Um, idea two, this one is um, using visual supports. Uh, this is not mm -hmm. new. I know that um, if you're a parent of a kiddo or a teen on the spectrum, you're probably, this is not, you know, news to you. Um, right. But we can take these same concepts, you know, of using pictures, picture schedules, graphic organizers, um, and then just apply that to whatever science content you're wanting to teach. Um, oh, that's a really great idea. I love it. Um, and so I have here just a couple of, um, this was like a science experiment log, and then I just have um, little spaces on there for each thing. Mm -hmm. And then they can, you know, you can cut out and paste pictures on there, or you can draw or write. So um, mm -hmm. this is kind of a way, a different way to, you know, express or show what you're going to be doing for the experiment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to Put up another this is another version of it next this one is available online it's a free download um okay. but i so i used this one with an online class i was teaching of um some first and second graders and um you know we started out with just like three simple steps you know let's ask a question let's make a guess and then let's see what happens um uh -huh. so we yeah. started out kind of simple with that and i just you know wrote down their notes Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of different ways you can just use those visuals to guide and support. Um, and like I said, I know if you're um, a parent, you probably already know a lot about these, but they're just something you can, you know, add on to your science instruction as well. Right. Yeah. Well, and too, you know, oftentimes when you, you get those, those science logs there, they have sent, you know, a space for a sentence, not a box mm -hmm. like that. And I think, um, I, I never even thought of doing it that way. My kids would have loved making their their notes for our experiments if if they would have had those boxes. I I just know it because they're all visual learners. So that um, that's really cool. Yeah, and I have some students who just really like art and drawing, and they would like love to draw their own stuff instead of writing it as a sentence. So it's kind yeah. of yeah, let's mm -hmm. you be flexible, like you said, for what however they express that best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. I love that. So I was going to also walk through another visual support I used. This was a science experiment that I did um, with uh, that same group of first and second graders I mentioned a minute ago. Um, right around the holidays, we did um, this little marshmallow experiment. Um, which one would melt faster, a big or small marshmallow? Um, and so I had purchased, um, I had purchased this, um, you know, set of visual supports for any science experiment, and then you can kind of customize it. Mm -hmm. So it breaks it down into each step and has kind of a visual reference for each step of the experiment, you know, so you're asking a question and it has a picture there that represents that. And then, so okay. we wrote out our question and then we added the picture of the marshmallows, which marshmallow will melt first. Um, so what we're seeing on the screen here for the podcast listeners is um, it's a picture of someone asking questions and it has the phrase, ask mm -hmm. a question, what do I want to know? And then we put pictures of the marshmallows and it says which marshmallow will melt first. So we have a lot of visual mm -hmm. supports mm -hmm. built onto that page. And once we did that, right. um, the next page that we I looked at with the kids, um, it says make a hypothesis or guess what do I think mm -hmm. will happen? Um, and this was actually their answer. They said they will get wet and melt. 
<laughs> which is very true. <laughs> So I typed out, (laughs) exactly it was. So I typed out Mm -hmm. their answer in the box there and um, I still had the visual support. I had two pictures of the marshmallows there for them to look at so they could be thinking about it while we were talking about it. Um, And then the next page is experiment materials. What do we need? And this I just kind of typed out for them and we talked about it. Probably would have been better if I'd actually had a picture of each of these items. Um, Mm. I guess I did not at this time. If I was going to do this again, I would probably post a little clip art or a picture of each item Mm. that we needed. Mm -hmm. The marshmallows, the mug, the water, even a spoon, the hot chocolate. Um, You could have a photo of each of those, depending on, you know, which level of picture supports your kid is currently using. Um, This is probably my favorite one on this on this page. So you can also have, you know, the visuals for the steps of the experiment. So this page says experiment procedure. What will I do? Um, and this little set of visual supports I bought came with all these different clip art pictures that were, you know, common steps of experiments. So I just pulled out the ones that were relevant to our experiment. It says um, first pour, pour the water in and the, mm-hmm. the, the hot chocolate mix in, add the marshmallow fellows and then we watch and see what happens Mm -hmm. so i really like Mm -hmm. how this broke down the three steps um so you could really clearly see exactly what we're going to do and photos would work well as well yeah exactly i love that watch part because oftentimes you you think of the steps in an experiment and then the observe is like the next step in the log but for a student on the spectrum that you know logically you have to wait and building in that wait time is important (laughs) so because we can't get to the result right away so yeah and this one this one took a little bit of time so yeah it was good that we had that on there Uh (laughs) uh-huh it was fun to watch though Mm -hmm. Um, so i'm just i'll I'll flip through this quickly. This was just kind of a a data recording sheet that came with the science experiment. So you can, um, you know, just, you know, um, this one, I had these little circles so we could circle, you know, which was the correct answer. Um, Or you or you could this one says draw what happened. So there's kind of multiple ways that you could um, have, you know, kids respond. Uh, right. to these. You can circle the answer, you can draw it, um, or you could write it mm-hmm. here where it says what happened. There's kind of multiple ways to respond, which I thought was um, a cool resource on this, um, on this yeah. activity. Um, so, I mean, I won't, I won't read through all these, but um, <laughs> so you just kind of, um, you know, write out all the steps. Um, and I just kind of typed out what they, what they stated to me on these. So I, I it love kind that of it asks not step. only what they saw, but it also makes them process it. What did you learn? Um, and as you were going through those slides, because because um, oftentimes we stop at what did you see, instead of you know what well, what what can we take away from that? Yeah, well. and they came up with some you know interesting responses there. So they did a great job. I'm just looking back at. Um, I just mm-hmm. typed out mm-hmm. what they told me. So, yeah, they were good. <laughs> they did a great job. Yeah, they did. <laughs> this was like six months ago, so I had kind of forgotten what we did. So that was fun to <laughs> fun to relive that experiment. But, right. Yeah. Um, so I really like how that, you know, broke down each step in the experiment and then gave some visual supports along with each one. So mm-hmm. um, that was a really cool resource. And the link to it is here. And I know the links are going to be available um, on wherever you're watching. So these are links to those activities. These ones are not mine. Um, a lot of the things I've linked in the presentation I did make, but these I did buy from other teachers. So these I can't take credit for, but um, they are really, really fun, amazing resources. So, yeah. And if you're you're new and you just joined us, just know that the um, all the slides with these links are on um, our YouTube channel description so of this this broadcast so you can go into that description and just click on it and get everything right there so um, thanks to Nicole that she prepped that ahead of time for you yeah Yeah, and thank you for setting up all those links this was fantastic absolutely yeah all so right. we've got so, another question. Are oh, you willing absolutely. to take a question before uh-huh. we continue on? Okay. Do you want me to click off my slides or just kind oh, of leave it up I here? Can, I, 
Well, yeah, let me bring them down because then we're going to take a break anyways, because um, we'll be halfway okay, through probably. Mm -hmm. So if you want to mm -hmm. switch over, I've um, put them mm -hmm. down below. So, okay. um, but mm -hmm. our, our guest says, I've been trying to find ways to combine art and music with STEM. Do you have any ideas for Ooh. her? Mm -hmm. oh, that is a great idea. I also like teaching art. You know what? I haven't combined it a lot um, with the exception of... Um, 3D modeling goes along really well with art, um, as does mm -hmm. graphics design and, and coding can as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna have some links that come up for um, the coding and the 3D modeling and kind of different graph, um, not graphics design, yeah, graphic design. Um, those are really good for combining technology and art. Um, I am not a very musical person, unfortunately, so that I do not have, um, much help with, so I apologize for that. <laughs> Somehow I got through four years of high school band, but I am not musically skilled. Um, so that one I may not be the best person to help with, um, but a lot of graphic design and technology has some good art integration mm -hmm. components, and I'll have some links um, for that that may be helpful that you'll be able to see at the end of the presentation. That is an awesome question and an awesome idea to combine that stuff together, because um, mm -hmm. it can go yeah. really well together. Well, and if you are a viewer and you have ideas, we would love you to put them in the feed and, and share oh, yes, them with us. And we, yeah. we can I share those too. The, too. Thing that, the thing that came to mind as you were talking is video editing and adding music into videos oh, yeah. um, with technology. It's a skill that uh, is very valuable. Um, a lot of kids like making videos, um, even like the stop motion, they can add music to it. Um, there's there's even free programs for that out there. So that might be another way to get music and tech together. Um, so. yeah, that's an awesome idea. Anyways, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're halfway through. So I'm going to let you take a little break, Nicole, and you can have a drink of water. And um, we're going to hear from our sponsor. And then Nicole's going to come back and she has even more slides and more information to share with us. And you don't want to miss that. So, um, so anyways, I want to thank um, uh, Unlock Math for sponsoring this episode of um, Empowering Homeschool Conversations. And um, I'm just going to read what they, they gave me to, to read to you, but they are an amazing um, company. If you want to know more about their programs after I read this, also know that we have a, um, a YouTube review of their curriculum, and, um, and Ruth did an amazing job on that, so you want to check that out as well on our review crew um, playlist. So Unlock Math works where other programs fail. We hear it all the time from, unsatis from satisfied parents and students. What sets Unlock Math apart from the rest? Clear, easy to understand video instruction with a gifted math teacher, Alyssa Blackwell. Carefully constructed online learning platform that gives immediate feedback for every question. Unlimited practice and continual review of concepts previously learned. Online chat and or phone chat is available as students work through lessons. What do the parents of Unlock Math have to say? Well, Kathleen says, here's an update on Katie's experience with dyscalculia and Unlock Math. This has been our best year of math ever. She even said that she was proud of herself. Math and proud. I never thought I would hear her say that. And Mark says, our family uses this program and we have been so pleased with the results. Our daughter who struggled in math is now wanting to do math with Unlock Math, even on the weekends and over the holidays. Wow, great program. You can be the next Unlock Math success story. Get started with a 14-day free trial. You can learn more about this amazing math program for grades 6 through 12 at unlockmath.com. So thank you, Unlock Math. We greatly appreciate your partnership as well as your sponsorship of this broadcast. And um, so I'm going to bring Nicole back, and um, we're going to continue talking about STEM and teaching STEM to kids with um, autism spectrum disorder. And, and really, it, I think this applies to kids with, with any kind of unique learning need. Um, and even if they don't, making things visual, it just makes it easier to teach <laughs> in general. Oh, yeah. So, so great, great teaching concepts to, to learn. So, um, so yeah, so would, should we bring up your slides again and, and go from there? Sure, yeah, just let me know when I Okay, well, I'm, I'm ready and I'll flip the window over. Right, right now. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. and as I was listening to, um, 
to that ad, that seems like kind of perfectly correlated with the first question we got about, you know, teaching math skills. And I had mentioned dyscalculia mm. resources. So it sounds like that may be a good one to check out to the person who asked the first question as well. Yeah. And um, Ruth kind does of an aside. amazing job with that, I'd, that review. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just have to check that out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So idea number three. All right. Well, mm -hmm. Um, so we kind of already talked about that with the last one, how we broke that experiment down into steps. Mm -hmm. um, but if you uh, break tasks down, anything you're doing really into small steps, that's a great way to teach one um, step at a time. Um, so yeah. one application of that, in addition to what we just talked about, um, is to if you're just starting out, you know, teaching these concepts or if you have younger children, Um, you can start with just a really simple experiment just to get them used to this question, guess, observation process, uh, which is, you know, a very basic form of the scientific method. Right. Um, so this is actually an extremely simple little experiment, but all my kids that I work with love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you can see in the picture, it's a little program called Snap Circuits. Um, oh, yeah. uh -huh. it's really fun. They're made for, um, they're made for young kids, but you know, they, they go really advanced with electronic circuit components as well. So various ages can use these. Um, and what this does in the picture here, it just has, um, some batteries, um, and a switch and that top part is kind of a spinner thing. And so when you push the button, it starts to spin really fast and it's, you know, it's super cool looking and fun and all the kids just love it. Uh. <laughs> and uh, I mean, so for, you know, the very first experiment I might do with someone or if it's a younger kid, um, you know, the, the question that we looked at was this one. Well, what, you know, what will happen when I turn the switch on? And so, right. you know, they looked they looked at the setup I had here and then they made a guess. Um, and so you can see the guesses they made listed there. Um, um, that last one was really Turned most of them a diamond. Into a diamond, <laughs> which was my favorite guess of all of them, of course. <laughs> That's and the creative then, one of the yeah. bunch, right? <laughs> oh, oh yes, loved it. Um, and it was it ended up kind of funny because, um, as you can see, I wrote down what they said, you know, for their observations at the end. Um, and one of them said, you know, it looked like a diamond when it was spinning. So I was like, well, there oh, you go, you know. There you go. You got the <laughs> so, diamond. <laughs> um, it, it worked out perfect. Um, <laughs> you know, so that was really fun. And this is, um, you know. Um, an activity snap circuits is a great way. I should have put a link to that one as well. I may have to add that in snap circuits is really yeah. fun. I have never had a kid that I worked with that didn't think it was cool. Um, so that's a fun, Neat. fun way to introduce, you know, some basic electricity concepts mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I mean, that was just about as simple and basic as of an experiment as you can get, but it was a big hit with the kids and you can use it mm -hmm. to introduce these concepts. And it's something very visual and something very tangible that they can, you know, see the results of quickly. So right. it's a good first yes. kind of introduction mm -hmm. to the basic scientific method of ask a question, make a guess, and then see what happens. Um, yeah, instead of gathering all the supplies, which normally is involved in the experiment, mm -hmm. you've got everything already put together. So it's mm -hmm. just the push of a button and the results are there. So yeah. that, that does make sense to, you know, start with things like that that are a little easier and, and build up. Yeah, and this one is super motivating too. I, like I said, my kids have always mm -hmm. loved this one. So, and I do too. I think it's fun too. So that probably, yeah. <laughs> that probably, that helps, probably helps. That I love yes, it too. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's as fun as they do. Mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, that's a very cool resource and it's called Snap Circuits. If you wanna, um, you awesome. know, you can get it almost anywhere from Amazon or any other lots of places. So hmm. they're pretty cool. Um, um, another one for breaking down tasks into small steps. This is just something that I had from the previous section, you know, just kind of using pictures for each step in an experiment. Yeah. Um, like we saw with that previous one, that's just another way you can break things down. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, I mean, you could add, you know, more steps if you needed to break it down further. It just depends on, you know, um, how complex your experiment is or how much you want to break it down. Um, and you can take photos of each step. There's lots of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. So I know we talked a lot about that in the previous section. So these were just a couple of examples for, you know, breaking it down into small steps. But Got it. that's probably yeah. a familiar component to a lot of us as well, since that's just a good teaching practice for almost anything. Yeah. So. 
But it's good to be reminded that, you know, this this fits into every category that we teach and um, and this is a way to do it for these these more science um, oriented mm -hmm. lessons. So so yeah, yeah. it's great. Awesome. All right, well, I will um, go on to um, idea four um, is to use something called priming. And probably a lot of us yeah. do this, whether we call it that or not. This is probably my wordiest slide on here. So I apologize <laughs> for the wordiness of it. Um, so I'll just kind of read over what it says. This is a sure. more general description of priming in general. And then I'll talk about a couple of examples of using it specifically with STEM mm -hmm. concepts. Yeah, um, great. But priming is a strategy uh, that we can use to help a student with autism prepare for upcoming activities. So with priming, you're, uh, what you're really doing is previewing um, either activities or upcoming events or information with a child before they're going to participate in the activity. Um, so that helps make an upcoming activity the or event more predictable and familiar to that student so that um, mm -hmm. it's more comfortable when they start doing it. Right. Um, so on that list there on the screen is um, just a couple of ex or a few examples of, of priming just as a general concept. Um, um, if you have a student in school or at any kind of, you know, camp or homeschool co-op program, if you know what books they're going to be looking at there, um, you could also look at the same book at home so they're familiar with it mm, before they go to yeah. those places. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be going to the zoo or any other place, you could show pictures of that in advance just so they mm -hmm. can uh, be prepared for what they might see. Um, if you um, know you're going to be doing a particular assignment, you know, you could go over, you know, um, go over it in detail up front, um, you know, show examples, explain it, you know, so a student really knows what they're going to be doing. So that can help relieve some anxiety about assignments. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned that a minute ago, showing examples of completed assignments, as well as using things like um, rubrics to show exactly, mm -hmm. you know, what is expected in the assignment, break down everything step by step that they're going to need to do. Um, right. mm -hmm. or just doing a demonstration of something. Um, so what you're just trying to do with this is give um, a student, um, you know, information up front so that they're not, you know, thrown off by anything unexpected later on. Um, right, because uh, when you start adding lots of tasks, especially when they get older, that, that can get um, difficult to, t am, I, am I doing everything I need to? And um, remembering all those steps and that executive functioning part is um, nice to have all those little helps in there for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and rubrics are helpful for that as well, I think, too, because mm -hmm. you can almost use those for like a checklist, um, you know, for making sure you have everything done. Yeah, yeah, I built a rubrics for my, my son's high school science, and one of them was check your spelling on his, oh, yeah. you know, on his report where, you know, they're thinking, well, I just have to do science, but well, no, you need to also use a full sentence yeah. <laughs> and you need to spell things correctly. Um, so, so yeah, the, but that rubric then allowed him to, to have that check before he turned it in to make sure that that was done. So, yeah, that's part, yeah it's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. um, so I will, um, I'm going to look through, these are a couple of science kind of specific priming um, examples mm. that I used. Um, this one, I have, um, I have a free download of a set of activities to do with magnets. And so this is just a screenshot from that activity is what's being shown on the screen. So um, mm -hmm. when I would first, you know, introduce a, a science lesson on magnets to a student, I might just do some of the activities on these lists here that are more or less um, just like letting the child play with the magnets or just kind of showing oh, what they do, but yeah. not really mm -hmm. teaching anything at first necessarily. Mm -hmm. So some of the items on this list, you know, they say just um, just showing how a magnet can push or pull things, you know, including other mm -hmm. magnets and then just letting the child play around with it. Um, there's kind mm -hmm. of really casually showing different things that a magnet can do and then just let the, the student have some free play with it. Um, right. 
And that's kind of what I do first, just so the student, you know, gets, you know, used to the materials, kind of sees mm -hmm. what they, you know, can and cannot do before we try to formally teach anything. Um, right. So yeah. that way they get used to the materials and, you know, see what you're going to be doing. And I might not even do a formal lesson until the next day. We might just have this be the mm. entire first day with magnets. Um, it's, you know, you can, you know, depending on your child, you know them best. So um, right. you would know what would work for them. But mm -hmm. um, that's something yeah. that I kind of start with. Go ahead. Sorry for I talking. I was just going to say it, it, it helped that familiarity really helps to ground information. And um, it's so important to have that that time because what you do afterwards is grounded by those memories and those experiences and so um, so I can see how that could be a great addition and a lot of times science like texts and, and things like that don't leave time for this so I'm glad that you pointed that out because as a parent we can build those things in but we just have to be mindful that they're helpful. Yeah, what you were saying made me think of two things. I mean, one being, you know, that is a nice thing about homeschooling is that you can, you know, build in that flexibility to, you know, add in that extra stuff if you need it at first. Um, I'm going to check if you can still hear me. Sorry, I think I might have cut out for a minute. Are we still, is the sound still working okay? Um, it is. We both just kind of faded in and out, but um, okay. it looks well, like. Okay, I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're back now. I don't now. know. <laughs> yep. So we'll just keep going. <laughs> keep pressing <And> that, through. <laughs> yep. The other thing that what you were saying made me think of was, um, you know, a lot of reading comprehension we know is, you know, based on background experience and background knowledge. So I hadn't actually really thought of this in that way before, but this is kind of a way to give students a little bit of background information with something, you know, before we try mm -hmm. to teach it, give them some background experience with concepts. So that just got me thinking about that, what you just said. I, hmm. I hadn't really connected those in my mind before, but I wonder if that's something that might help with, you know, academic comprehension is just having some mm -hmm. time to build up that background experience with a concept. So thank you so much for sharing that. I'm, sure. I'm, I'll have to like not get distracted by that because I'm very interested oh, in that no. now. So I will focus, <laughs> but um, that's a really interesting idea. So I'm glad that you made me think of that. Um, but I guess, I mean, speaking of reading comprehension that also like led perfectly well into this because mm, um, mm -hmm. I know this is super tiny and hard to see so I apologize if you download the slides you'll be able to see what's on here a little bit better um, but um, another thing that's related to priming is something we call primer passages hmm. and these are um, sometimes used for reading comprehension but I, I have a set of um, reading comprehension passages that are about science topics um, and there is a link, I think, to download them. They're free as well. Um, one of the links in um, the link set that you'll be able to access should have that. Great. Um, so if you have, you know, if your student is going to be reading something about science or has, um, you know, a science textbook or anything like that, oh, yeah. um, a, a quick and easy adaptation you can make is to make something called a primer passage. And what that is, hmm. is kind of just a short, simple, um, sometimes it's in a list format like you see here a list of the most important points from the passage um you know kind of some main ideas um and in the picture there i just have you know like a list of five items that are really relevant points from the article that it goes with and there's also some pictures that go along with each fact um so this is something that you can show your child first uh, mm -hmm. and go over the basics with them So kind of they're getting, okay, this is the gist of what I'm kind of, you know, gives them an idea of what's coming um, and gives them, you know, an idea of what some of the main points might be. And so mm -hmm. that is something that can help, you know, when before they read, you know, their textbook or an article or um, a book, um, if you know, do a quick little outline or overview of it that you can show them beforehand, that kind mm -hmm. of gives them some familiarity with it first. So that's a, a another way you can use priming. I'm gonna grab yeah. a drink of water, sorry. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, the, it, science has so many, you know, like hard to, to understand concepts sometimes. And when you use those pictures that, and just link that to, to things that when 
when they hear that again, they're, they can think right back to that picture. And I can see how this can be super helpful mm -hmm. because those, um, those texts can get really long and, and I, I was, I was re trying to read through a bill the other day and I, I was feeling the same way. I'm like, I need pictures. I need somebody to oh, actually do the visuals yeah. for me because <laughs> I'm not understanding this. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, we, I, I wish that this was this was available for everything. That would be very exactly. nice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need AI for this, right? <laughs> okay, somebody out there, think of how oh, do you do that? <laughs> yes. I know. Yeah, whoever wants to make that, please do. That would be awesome. Yes, exactly. I don't think it would be that hard. You know, just pictures with. No, I bet it would. Yeah, with the words. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we are we are solving all the problems all right the now. world right now. Yes, <laughs> yes, um, or or at least giving ideas to someone who then will solve them. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't think I have time for that, but somebody yeah. might. <laughs> somebody will. Um, um, so I guess I will. Let's see. I have one more idea, and then I just have some resource lists. Um, yeah, that'd be great. So the last idea I was going to bring up, oh, I didn't change the title on this, so I'm sorry there is, um, there's an error here. <laughs> One of my uh, lessons I've been doing with some kids this week was it's okay to make a mistake, so I'll have to tell them about this it, because it I is. did not change my title here. <laughs> so, That's okay. I had, I had the yeah. header above our, our broadcast for months, and it had a misspelling in it, and I thought, oh my goodness, but I'm not going to go back and change it. I'm, I'm human. That just happens. So. Yep. So if you go back and watch previous episodes, you'll see that conversations is spelled wrong. <laughs> I yes. bet I never would have noticed. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I probably right. shouldn't have drawn attention to it either. But since I yeah. did, oh well. Um, so what's idea number five then? That's it's a mystery now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The intention was well, I have it in the subtitle there. I guess I just didn't copy and paste it at the top. But um, to use your child's interests as a teaching tool. And again, you oh, know, perfect. not. Um, not an unusual idea um, and with homeschooling you know I'm sure you know we have so many opportunities to do mm -hmm. that which is what makes mm -hmm. it so great yeah. um, but I I, I put this in at the very end because I found this picture uh, um, when I was looking through my materials to prepare for this and I uh, remember this activity really fondly um, mm. We were um, learning about animal habitats, and the kid I was working with on this um, is a big Star Wars fan. Mm. So, um, you know, when looking at the animal habitats, we took pictures from that particular or those particular movies, and we matched them up with, you know, desert and um, oh, Arctic, cool. with, you know, like Hoth, <laughs> and um, we mm -hmm. did Dagobah for like wetlands and swamps, and um, right. so we, you know, um, early it to what that student was interested in. So I thought it was just kind of a fun little way to end That's because cool. I remembered that. Yeah. I was like, oh, that was so fun when we did that. So mm -hmm. um, that one, you know, just anything you could think of as a way to relate it to something your child's interested in really makes it fun. Um, mm. And I don't remember how we came up with this idea. Um, you know, you might not think automatically, oh yeah, we could totally do Star Wars with, um, you know, <laughs> ha animal habitats, but we found a way to make it work. So. Um, and so that was just a really fun way to do that. And um, that is one of my, you know, favorite teaching approaches is taking what they're interested in and using it to mm -hmm. teach, you know, whatever we're working on. So that's probably my favorite thing, um, my favorite teaching that's strategy awesome. ever. But, um, and it's perfect for homeschooling because we have all that flexibility that we can, <clears throat> excuse me, to build in with that. Yeah, and as a parent, you know what your child's interests are because they talk mm -hmm. about them all the time. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at the conundrum right now. I'm trying to build fashion into everything, which <laughs> that's my daughter's go-to. And it's like, oh, what can we do now? <laughs> but, yeah, sometimes you can't. Oh, I know, but... yeah, sometimes, yeah, you run out of ideas, but that's what, you know. And that's what online exactly. communities are good for too, thinking of different ways to yes, connect. Yes, like, get, get ideas, ideas from somebody else who, who's maybe more creative than you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, awesome. Yes. Well, yeah, we'd I'm love all to see about, you. I am all about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we've got 10 minutes, so I'd love to be able to be able to share your resources with us. Yeah, um, so I'll just kind of flip through the resource list, and then if there's sure. any additional questions, we can take those, I guess, and then yeah, we'll wrap up. Yeah, that'd but, be great. Um, mm -hmm. So these are a few different um, free or low cost online tools um, that I use a lot. 
Um, so the first one is a website called Starfall. You may be familiar mm-hmm. with a lot of these, but Starfall is an online games website. It's not just for uh, it's not just for STEM, but it does have you know um, some math and science and yep. um, different activities on there that are really fun, and they are designed um, for. I mean, they're. I think you know a lot of teachers and parents use them regardless, but they are really set up to be very um you know simple and step by step and systematic so they're really great mm-hmm. for um when we want things broken down that's a really great website they have some free mm-hmm. stuff on there and there's also a subscription but i think it's fairly low cost um mm-hmm. but they have some free stuff as well so it's worth checking very out cool. mm-hmm. um i use pbs kids games a lot um if a you lot of parents that do use this yeah. particular link the one that says pbskids.org oh i love it um, and if you use that particular link there, it says slash games slash all topics. Um, then you can go to, they have, you know, it completely categorized. You can go to science oh, games, you can cool. go to math games, you can go uh-huh. to nature games. Um, they have it all broken down by topics. So you can just click on whatever you want and it takes mm-hmm. you to a whole section of games about that. So that's, um, right. a very well-organized list of all the mm-hmm. PBS kids online games, which are really cool. Great. Um, I've been using Kindle uh, Unlimited a lot too. It's um, on your computer or if you have a Kindle device, um, Mm -hmm. this lets you check out or have like 10 books at a time and you pay a monthly Uh subscription, but then you can get any, I mean, not any, but only some books participate in this program. But there are a lot of science and math and STEM books on there. So you can just um, have up to 10 books at a time. And so you don't have to pay for each individual book. Oh, um, you okay. just pay, I think mm-hmm. it might be like nine ninety nine a month, and then you can get, mm-hmm. you know, 10 books at a time. Um, so it's kind cool. of a way that you can add a lot of, you know, reading material to your digital library without spending mm-hmm. a lot of money. So I've been using that a lot this year. Neat. Um, SciShow Kids on YouTube is a really fun science mm. video channel. Um, kids I've worked with really like it. It's really cute and really fun, but it's the videos are really educational as well. Hmm. Um, So that's just a fun YouTube show to check out if your kids, I was gonna say if your kids like YouTube, but probably most kids do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But it's a safe channel. So it's always good to know as a parent. Mm -hmm. I know. So I kind of feel like with a lot of these, you know, I mean, I know that, you know, too much technology is not good, but it's, they're going to be on it sometimes and then may as well let exactly. it be educational. So, yep, I totally these agree. Are great for mm-hmm. that. Um, and then those last two there, those might be more for um, for the older, older students. Um, Tinkercad is that 3D modeling program that you saw oh, some of those okay. pictures from mm-hmm. earlier. Um, yep. It is, it's um, at least the last time I checked, I actually haven't used it much in the last few months, but last time I checked, it's totally free to use. Um, they have some built-in tutorials on there, um, and I have um, taught this program to kids um, from ages um, seven and up, I think, and even to some mm-hmm. young adults. Um, and they've all come up with some really cool designs, so it's fun just to play around with, or that might be a great summer activity, you know, if you're looking for something kind of um, yeah, educational to do over the summer, you know, make some, you know, cool 3D designs. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, um, some people even use this program professionally, you know, to do like, you know, prototyping for, you know, different, you know, part. I'm not a engineer type person completely, but um, I know it's used for prototyping and things like that. So, huh. um, but it can also be used to make, you know, cool art, artistic pictures and just learn, you know, how, you know, things fit together in visual mm-hmm. space. So um, yeah. that could be a cool summer project. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely. So it's pretty, it's worth checking out because it's free. And so, you know, just give it a try mm-hmm. and see if you like it. Right. Um, yep. That last one is um, code.org. And on that website is also something called Hour of Code. Um, yes. And those are mm-hmm. great little introductions to coding. And they have them for all different ages and skill levels. Um, and so if you might like to try, you know, coding over the summer, the, this is mm-hmm. also completely free. Um, so, you know, you could try it out, see if your kids like it. Um, mm-hmm. And then if they want to pursue it, there's more advanced stuff on there, but there's some really basic stuff too that you can try. And they have a lot of fun themes. They have, you know, Minecraft mm-hmm. themed stuff. They have, you know, Disney um, themed stuff. Oh, cool. I think what other yeah. things, they have a Star Wars coding one. So if you're, mm. 
kid happens to be interested in any of those things, you can use that, you know, to teach coding. So there's some cool yeah. stuff on there to check out, which might be good for summer as well. Yeah, yeah, great ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are Super resources. those are some of the links that are pretty um, pretty cool to check out. Um, if you look at the um, you know the download of this presentation, these are some of my links. If you want to find anything else about me, you'll also yeah. find the references for this presentation there. Um, but yeah, because yeah. I'm I'm like that. I am all about the references. So, <laughs> but that's the end of the slides. If you want to turn those off, and I can come back on. Yeah, or, um, yeah that'd be great. Um, yeah. So if you're listening and you weren't able to see um, Nicole's. Um, website is Autism Homeschool Success, and it's just AutismHomeschoolSuccess.com, um, and that's where you can can find her. And then, of course, in the slides, you also shared how to get connected with your your Facebook pages and um, your teachers paid teachers um, site and all of that. So lots of great resources out there. And um, so yeah, so if you have any comments or questions, we have a couple minutes before um, we're wrapping up. And I know there's a little bit of a time lag um, between when we're talking and when you hear us. So <laughs> so we'll, we'll wait a couple couple minutes to see if anybody has anything to, to share or to say. But um, um, this has been great information, Nicole. I really appreciate um, how you've just broken it down so simply um, and, and just given us some great great resources so um so thanks for doing that and uh, making such great slides yeah well thank you so much for having me i was uh super nervous you could all probably tell but this was so fun and i'm really i'm really appreciative of the opportunity to be here so thank you so much yeah yeah and our internet lasted <laughs> so <laughs> amidst yes. all the little glitches but um but yeah so um so this same episode will come out on sunday with we're broadcast we broadcast live Tuesday nights, but on Sunday the podcast comes out, um, and so you'll have to watch um, for for that link if um, you're more into podcasts versus videos. And um, then we also take um, four shorter segments of this video and re-release them on the YouTube channel next week. So um, so then if you can get little snippets, if you don't have a full hour to um, devote, but but you still want to learn some a few things about STEM and teaching, we'll we'll make sure you get that as well. Um, in the size of content that you can can process um, with all the craziness going on in your house. You know, the crazy thing is, <laughs> I, I have to tell you this, Nicole, is that we watch the traffic on our website, um, and the the busiest time is in the middle of the school day. And so it's like, I'm desperate. I need something yeah. now. I'll go to Sped Homeschool and try to find it. <laughs> so, um, but hopefully you can find it. Just do a search. You'll find yeah. everything on there. Um, search the YouTube channel, um, search um, our website. We've got some great articles by all of our partners and um, on there too. So we do have a question. You know, Mm -hmm. Okay with me sure. putting that up? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, Amber has some really cool tips tonight considering I have twin boys with autism, um, also first year homeschooling. Um, so it gives me some new ideas to use maybe next year and through the summer. Um, thanks Peggy as well. You are welcome and um, that's cool feedback. Yeah. Um, thanks, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you did. You gave some great ideas for, for helping us make it through the summer because I know when you've got really active boys, <laughs> yeah. you want to have a list of to-do things uh, yes. at the ready. <laughs> As you know, you with the 13-year-old. You, you... Oh, yes. He is still <laughs> quite active, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, speaking of active, we have finished this month's... Um, topic on autism homeschooling but next month we are talking all about getting outdoors and getting your learning outdoors with the weather getting better we want to encourage you to um to just even take your books outside or do whatever but um so we have guests that are passionate about outdoor learning and um so next week is our first um live broadcast on that topic. And um, we're gonna talk about increasing outdoor learning experiences with Justin Shell. And so you'll definitely wanna um, stay tuned um, and tune in for that and see what he has to share. He um, runs an organization that gets people out and connected um, with one another outside, meeting at parks and other things. So I'm sure he's gonna have some great ideas for us. But um, but yeah, so, so that's what we have coming up and um, I, 
I don't know where everybody is, but I'm going to be starting to speak this month, so I'm excited to be at some um, conferences in Texas. I've been um, on an online conference this week. Um, thankfully, I pre-recorded that. <laughs> Lots of crazy things going on. But, um, but Nicole, I just want to thank you for your time with us, for sharing your passion for um, parents um, that are homeschooling children on the spectrum, and um, just uh, these great tips and encouragement for the road ahead. So I appreciate that. Uh, well, thank yeah, thank you so much again. And I can't wait to check out that next series. That actually sounds amazing. So I'm excited yeah, too. Yeah. But so I, I really appreciate being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, it's been great having you. And you, you did awesome. So just know that um, you can do live. So. <laughs> And uh, we just want to thank... <laughs> Yay, now we know. Yes, exactly. Um, and I want to thank all of our viewers for, for watching tonight. Um, and um, and uh, we just um, thank you for supporting us at SPED Homeschool. And also thank you to Unlock Math for um, sponsoring this episode. Um, definitely check out their website at unlockmath.com and the review on our review crew um, playlist as well. So, um, so yeah. So next... Next week, we'll hopefully see you all again as we, we dive into a new topic. And um, so have a great week, and we'll see you all then. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much.